Hey guys, I'm Evan. Welcome to Country View Acres. So tonight, I just got off work. It's Thursday night, getting ready to start my weekend. I thought I would try to cut some hay tonight so that I could hopefully get it bailed up over the weekend and not take any vacation days to do it. I typically take at least one vacation day. So I'm out here in the first hay field we planted and it's not doing the greatest. You can see there's a bunch of weeds mixed up in here. And when it was originally planted, it was orchard grass, alfalfa and you can see the alfalfa right here going to bloom and then it was also uh, timothy and we have timothy timothy seed heads we have coming up last year i thought this was mostly orchard grass i thought most of the alfalfa was gone and i hadn't seen any seed heads from timothy in a while but this year i think it must be the heat or it's dry enough or something the alfalfa you can definitely tell there's still alfalfa. You can definitely tell there's still Timothy grass in here. So, but it is a little weedy. Uh, my plan was to, um, my plan was to lime this field and fertilize it. And I never got the chance to do that. And that's probably the reason why it looks like it does. You can see there's patches that are a little yellow and not very green. And it's just lack of fertilizer. And uh, I think the weeds and everything, probably a higher pH in the soil would help with that. So it was sunny when I started cutting, when I started getting everything hooked up, I had to take the brush hog off and get the hay mower on here and everything was sunny. But now as we look back here, it is completely cloudy and there's a thunderstorm on the way. I just started cutting hay and that is the way the summer is. It is basically around here. It seems like every day is about a 20% chance of rain. And then you get a chance of these pop-up thunder showers. It's just one little bitty cell uh, of thunderstorms, and it's going to be really close. We may get hit, we may not, but I'm going to go ahead and keep on cutting. Hopefully, I can get this field done before it does rain, and hopefully, hopefully it doesn't rain. But uh, I'd rather have it rain on the hay as soon as I cut it, like this, rather than on hay that was dry for. You know a few days you, uh, getting it rained on right now when it's freshly cut not gonna affect the hay quality as bad as it would be if it rains on it here in a couple days i just heard some thunder but anyway it's gonna come really close to our to here hopefully we don't get any All right, I got our first hay field all cut and that thunder shower should have been here right about now. And it was a pop-up thunder shower and it just ended up disappearing, like it just went away. So I think we dodged a bullet. I don't think we're gonna get this rained on tonight. So that is a good thing. And uh, I got one more hay field to cut. Um, it's gonna be hard to tell. The sun is actually back out getting ready to set. Um, so it is, it's gonna get dark here in a minute. So I think tomorrow we'll come back in the morning and I think we're gonna do some work on the mower and try to fix a few things and then we'll cut the next hay field in the morning. So we'll take a quick look at the other hay field. Oh, there goes a deer into the woods. But this is mostly clover and it gets a little stemmy at the bottom and the mower doesn't wanna cut it real well. So we're gonna, we're gonna work on the cutters on the mower. So hopefully this cuts well tomorrow. You can barely see, getting the right, the thunderstorm that was forming and kind of went away over there. And then you can see the sun's back out farther back. Now we do, we do have a tree. Can't really see it. There's a tree down back there. I think it's a smaller tree. I, I went and walked back and looked at it. It's basically like a limb off of a tree. And I'll have to come back here and I think I can just pick that limb up and push it out of the way and get it out of the way before we cut this field tomorrow. But uh, this, this uh, clover has already gone to bloom and uh, there's a lot of it in bloom, but there's a lot of it that is starting to turn brown and you know the bloom is starting to die off. So the bloom 
would normally look kind of purpley like this. So it's definitely time to cut this hay field if we can get it done. Morning everyone. And uh, it's not a very good morning either. If you can see behind me, the concrete's all wet. We had some storms kind of develop this morning. We got rain at six o'clock this morning and the weather forecast has completely changed. Instead of like a 20% chance of rain tomorrow, it's more like an 80% chance of rain tomorrow. So um, it seems like they can never predict the weather in the middle of the summer. It's always like, it's uh, always a chance of rain, right? And it, it always changes. It seems like the last couple weeks we had a chance of rain every day. We never got any. And of course, this as soon as you cut hay, it's, um, it's kind of like a rain dance. That's what Rebecca was saying. It's, it's a rain dance. As soon as I cut hay, it's going to end up raining, and it did. So my plan for this morning was to work on the sickle bar here at the front of the mower. That's what cuts the grass. I've got all new sickles or all new knives to replace, and then hopefully I can get this to, to cut better before we do the next field. But when I looked at this last night, I found a few issues last night, and I looked at it closer this morning, and I found a big problem with the mower. So this here is the hydraulic lift cylinder, and um, I've had trouble with this in the past. So this is a stop for it. It's supposed to push in on this pin, and when it pushes in on that, it stops it from lowering any farther. And this obviously doesn't clamp very tight, you can see that, and uh, it gets pushed around. And I had put this hose clamp right here, I had put it behind it to keep it from moving, but it's obviously pushed that back. And that means this was lowering farther than normal um, when we were mowing last night. So underneath the mower, there are two skid shoes. They are like a wide ski or a sled, and they are on the outer sides, and they let the mower ride the contour of the ground. They kind of set the cut height of the, the cutter blade. And if that lift cylinder, the more it lifts up, the more weight it's gonna put on those, on those skid shoes. Well, the one over here ended up bending up. It ended up, instead of being straight, it's twisted now, so it needs straightened. So I thought that all had to do with the hydraulic cylinder lifting too far. But I think this morning, I was looking at it a little bit farther, I found something else that's broke, and it's the main cause of everything. So right here at the wheel, there is a really big coil spring, and this is an, an extension spring. It stretches that spring out and that gives it what it calls flotation so that it has some suspension, it floats a little bit and it comes from up there and it bolts all the way back here. So looking here at the other side, this spring is laying flat because it is actually broken in half. So they call that a flotation spring and it basically helps the machine ride gently on the ground and since all the weight was on it, it ended up bending the skid shoe up, so it's not straight no more, it's like twisted, so that needs to be straightened out. But the big problem is, is that spring, I didn't think I was gonna be able to get it. I thought it was gonna be one of those parts that you'd have to only find on one of these machines and like strip it off of a parts machine. But I ended up calling a dealership. They don't make Heston anymore, okay? But they were bought out by Agco, which is the same company that owns Massey Ferguson. I called them up and um, that spring is actually still in stock. It's like 250 bucks for that spring. And it's probably three and a half inch diameter. And it's like two foot long, it's a big spring. And hopefully um, next week we'll have that spring and I can replace it. So we're gonna go ahead and take the old spring out today, straighten the skid shoe and fix the sickle bar. We get these two halves of the spring out. That actually came out really easy, which surprises me. All right, there's one half. So here's the spring that is broke. And the hard part about this is it has this insert that is threaded into the coil of that spring 
I think this is what's going to be hard to get out of there. But after I've looked at this, you can look where it broke. It's all rusty. This is not fresh. This didn't just happen. This has actually been broke for a while. And it's probably been broken since I bought it. And I didn't even realize it. It's just the, uh, the, the skid shoe and the wheel were sharing the weight of the machine. And the spring wasn't taking any of it. And I kind of got lucky, I guess, so far. But last night, the skid shoe took all the weight and it bent it up. So I think, I think I've just been lucky that I didn't damage the skid shoe before now. I guess I could cut it off of the insert, right? At this point in time. All right, we got the insert that goes in one side of the spring out. See where the threaded rod goes through, that's to adjust the spring tension. It's got flat spots on both sides, and that's probably where I should be cutting the spring off. So as we look at the sickle bar, you can tell it looks really rough. They're supposed to have serrated edges, and most of that's completely gone. And every one of these needs to be replaced. They are riveted on there, so we're gonna have to cut each one of these rivets off to change them out. So the other way to take out the rivets is to try to cut them off with a chisel. And they go flying across the room. They are hitting the wall on the other side of the room. So now we gotta get the rest of the rivet out and we'll just try to punch it through. So the toolbox on the mower actually had some spare parts and it had some sickles. They got a little bit of surface rust, but these will work. And then I ended up buying some brand new sickles as well. I think I bought about 20. So we'll have some extras left over, but we'll have enough to do the whole cutter bar. But instead of using rivets, we're gonna put these on with bolts instead. That way they're easier to change. All right, I've replaced all of the sickle sections that I can. These six right here are included in this drive end and they require a longer rivet or a longer bolt. And it, this is a special bolt as well. So I don't have any of those. I did have longer rivets and I thought they were gonna work, but they have a different head on them and I don't think they're gonna work. So I'm gonna leave this together. And instead of replacing these, I'm just going to take a grinder and we're going to sharpen these edges like you would a lawnmower blade and just put a smooth cutting edge along all of those. And that should help until I can actually replace them later. So on the very end of the sickle bar, it has what they call a half section and it's broken off right here. And I'm not sure exactly what the full shape of this is supposed to be, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this off and see if I can make one out of one of these. So here I've got the half section on top of one of the new ones. You can tell it's got the same angle. I'm just gonna go ahead and mark out this side. Since this piece is broken, I'm not sure whether the right side of this is angled or if the right side just goes straight I've seen both designs um, out there on the internet. I'm not sure which design this one is supposed to be. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go the easy route and I'm gonna cut this size straight for now.
All right, I'm going to flip this over so that I can mark the hole on the other side. So I've got transfer punch and we'll mark the center. And we have a nice mark where I'm supposed to drill a hole. All right, well, it's gonna be better than the broken one. So I think I'm done with the sickle bar now, but before we put it in, I've got one more thing to do. So I've got two of these uh, snub nose guards, and this is what basically the sickle bar sits on top of, and it cuts against this surface. And these are supposed to be nice and flat, and I think I've seen a couple of these actually tilted down, like bent down. And so I bought two of these. We're gonna go find those and replace them, and then we can go ahead and stick the sickle bar back in the mower. So I can lay down here and I can see the tips of all of these guards. And this one right here is for sure lower than the rest. So I know I need to change that one. I may have to look the other direction. That's the only one that's standing out to me right now. Ah, got one. See if I can put this sickle back in. You know, like I'm caught on something. Not sure what. Well, I'm hitting something. I was afraid of that. Low profile hold downs. It's made for rivets, not for bolts. So the problem are these hold downs that go on top. These are low profile, they're made for rivets, and then these nuts end up hitting on the inside of these. And if you change these out to bolts, you actually have to change these hold downs to like a high rise hold down. And that means these bolts are gonna hit all the way down the sickle bar. That's not gonna work. It is a very hot day outside today. It is supposed to be 100 degrees today, but feel like 111. At least that's what the forecast was. So I do have, I do have rivets that I could change out the bolts in the sickle. All of those bolts that I just put in, I could change them out and put rivets in there. And then it would work with those low profile hold downs, except I am not sure. I do have a bunch of rivets, but I'm not sure that's actually enough to do the whole bar. And then that's gonna be quite a bit of work. And then it'll always be a pain every time you have to change one. So the other choice is you can buy high profile hold downs for those bolts to go underneath it. But I'd have to buy 16 of those. And um, I'd have to find them and get them ordered and get them here. And then I'd have to try to change them out. To change them out, you have to take off each one of those snub nose guards. And that first one I took off, you can see how hard it was. It didn't want to come out. Um, so I'm sure I'll be cutting bolts off or, or fighting every one of them trying to get them off to replace it. So um, either way, I don't think either one's a great choice, but uh, I think I'll go ahead and get a price on the new hold downs. And I think I'm gonna walk away from this project today because it is hot, but I do need to ted the hay. The, the, the hay got rained on, it needs spread out and kicked up to get the hay to dry. So I need to grab the hay tedder, get it hooked up to the tractor and go ted what we cut last night, get that hay all fluffed up and spread out so that hopefully it will dry and hopefully we can get it bailed. Ooh, that's hot. Before I ted the hay, I've got to get this jack welded on the mower so that I can park it and use this tractor. I definitely want to use this tractor on a hot day like today.
So this stuff is definitely dry. I think it's dry enough I could bale it right now. It's been 24 hours since I cut this field and this is dry and it's really pretty decent looking. There's a few brown pieces of grass in here and I think that's probably from, from the weather getting rained on and then the hot sun, I think brown some of this a little quick. But most of it looks pretty good. Now there's not a lot of grass out here. This is This field didn't have a ton of growth. I'm not gonna get a, a lot of bales off of this. But I think tomorrow I'll be able to come out here Get everything raked up and uh, get it all baled. I'm going to make round bales this time. It is way too hot to try to make square bales. But uh, as long as the weather holds off for another 24 hours or so, I think I'll get this baled up without any issues. Well, I shouldn't say that, should I? Let's cross our fingers. But anyway, I think that's going to be it for this video. Really kind of disappointed in the whole, uh, you know, the mower, the hay mower, that's for sure. Worked all day on it, and then, <laughs> and then it still didn't work. And I should have realized the whole rivet difference between rivets and bolts because I had to change everything out on the sickle bar mower, the New Holland sickle bar mower. And for some reason, I guess that didn't occur to me. I thought this was new enough that it would have had the higher hold downs on it. So now, now I got a decision to make on how I'm gonna end up fixing that. But I think I've got a little bit of time till I cut the next field. But I think that's it for today's video, guys. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.